Hey, how about you, everybody? Welcome to this week's edition of the Auburn Live Recruiting Show. I'm your host, Jeffrey Lee, Senior Recruiting Editor for Auburn Live on 3. If you're not a member of that site, you still have an opportunity to get it for $25 until next September. It'll get you through next August. It starts uh, when Toe Meets Leather the next September. It's $9 a month after that. Can't beat it. It's like a cute puppy. Woo! Hey, join today as I always am. By Mr. J Head, Mr. Keith Niebuhr, Mr. Cole Pinkston will be joining us shortly. Potentially, look at Keith; he's in the disco, big dog. Yeah, I can barely hear you guys. I'm at a pizzeria. I had to. I got stuck in traffic, so I had to. I just figured I'd pull over. Before, yeah, I wasn't going to make it home in time. Pull over, get a nice pizza. That's um, a go. That's a go go, dude. That's a go go. Let, let you guys get a taste of Tampa here. Yeah, it's, it's definitely a go go. Oh, uh, you, you got the peace sign back there. I know Jeff's into the peace movement. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm a hippie at heart. I promise you. J Head, uh, are you still are you still on the road? You got the um, hotel the background. Still in the uh, the government furnished La Quinta Inn. Oh, you know what I mean? Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, high dollar, man. Dang, this is the, yeah, the, the government's uh, work back here. That's that's Picasso. Yeah, I'm 46, 47 years old. I got a zit. <laughs> I'll be damned. Hey, folks. You know what? When's your voice going to start to say? <laughs> I don't know. Well, I have to check and see. Before we get started, we got a lot to talk about, man. Before we get started, I want to remind everybody, if you're moving in Auburn or Opelika, Lee County, Alabama, need a house to be sold, need to find a house, call Jessica Andrus with EXP Realty, 334-704-4442. She can do investment properties. She can do residential property. Great time to do investment properties especially down in auburn give jessica andrus with exp realty a call 334-704-4442 folks we didn't do a recruiting show last week we were all tied up with uh family members thanksgiving and all that so we've got some things to go back over since our last recruiting show uh hugh freeze has been hired as auburn's new coach we've seen all but Cadillac Williams, Zach Etheridge, Christian Robinson, not retained by Hugh Freeze. Cadillac Williams is the only one who has a, a permanent spot on this staff. Christian Robinson, Zach Etheridge both made the first cut. It's kind of how I looked at it. They, they, they made mm-hmm. the first cut. They still got to interview when a de- defensive coordinator is named. We expect that to be fairly soon, but – um, and we'll we'll talk about some more some more of the coaches. We're gonna we're gonna stay with re- recruiting for for now, uh, but just in the last week, four star defensive lineman Darren Reed flipped his commitment from LSU to Auburn. Brenton Williams, the three star edge from Opelika, committed to Auburn. Four star wide receiver Adam Hopkins decommitted from Auburn, and we think there's probably a couple of more. Jamarian Harkless, the defensive lineman from Kentucky, certainly somebody that we're all watching. For a mutual parting of ways is how Keith likes to put it, and I think that's well well said. Let's start with the biggest story, in my opinion, which was Darren Reed. Yes. Darren Reed, last Friday, flipped his commitment from LSU to Auburn. We kind of thought it was coming. He'd been to Auburn f- just about for every home game. He just kept coming back, kept coming back, and finally pulled the trigger without a head coach. And then even after Jimmy Brumbaugh was let go on Tuesday or Wednesday, I, don't, I forgot what today is, Darren Reed told, tells Keith Niebuhr, hey, I'm still locked in. Keith, your thoughts on, on, on Darren? Yeah, we're going to keep checking back with him. He said he'll let me know uh, as things, as things uh, de- or, you know, as developments happen. But he's, hey, he said, I'm locked in. I, you know, I, I mean, I think he liked Jimmy Brumbaugh, but he committed to Auburn. He committed to the program itself, the school, the community. Uh, you know, he's a guy that, that uh, at the end of the day, it makes sense that he may want to stay home. I was talking to him last night. Forgive me, I got traffic a little loud, but I was talking to him last night. You know, he's got on his Twitter photo, a photo, a Twitter page, a photo of this woman, and it's his mom. And, uh, you know, his mother passed away five years ago. Mm-hmm. So I think he's somebody that. Home you know, plays a big part. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, just, you know, wanting to stay somewhere near the people that have, that have helped raise him the last several years since his mother passed away. But, you know, really good good kid to talk to. Uh, but, yeah, he's locked in now. I will say this, as of today's Thursday, as of Wednesday night, he had not spoken yet with new coach Hugh Freeze, but a lot of recruits had. In fact, we hadn't talked to any that had spoken to him. Uh, and that's because he's trying to put together the staff. They're trying to evaluate the commit list. Some of the guys, look, there's going to be a mutual parting of the ways, as we call it. 
but Darren mm-hmm. Reed is not going to be parted with. Okay, right. That's a, <laughs> that's kind of a guy that's going to be. Uh, you, you hope a mainstay on your defensive line for a few seasons. Kind of reminds me of Dontavious Russell. I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm off beat on that. Off on that way. He's he's a little lighter. I think Jay had right in that the. Yeah, uh, he's you know. he's coming in at high two sixties, low two yeah. seventies right now. But just you know, an athletic big guy plays hard. He's going to get. He's going to cause havoc at the backfield. But yeah, it sounds like he's locked in. No matter what, now we're going to get back to him, and, and you know, after he speaks with you, for to kind of get his initial impressions. But uh, yeah, I mean, and, and now you got a new defensive line coach uh, announced today. Well, not announced today, but we reported today that uh, Jeremy Garrett from Liberty, and previously with the Cleveland Browns, is going to be Auburn's D line coach. So if you're Darren Reed, you're probably excited about that. The guy that used to coach Miles Garrett and those guys with the Browns uh, is now going to be coaching you. So I, I think. The future looks bright. I think he's locked in. He says, hey, I'm only taking one visit. One more visit, and it's to Auburn. An official visit probably next weekend. Wow. Jay, That's your cool. thoughts on Darren Reed? Really great player. I mean, I, in high school, he's he's versatile. Where He'll play the five. He'll play the three. Sometimes he even plays over the nose. At Auburn, I think, if we go to a four-man front look, which is what I'm anticipating, contingent on who the defensive coordinator is, He's a prototypical three. Now, he's going to need to get into the weight room. He's going to need to add some weight, but he's twitchy. He's explosive. He's the kind of guy that can really cause negative plays with his ability to get vertical on the pass rush. And what I mean by that is he can kind of – he can cave the pocket and he can get up the field. He's the kind of guy – I'm not going to call him Nick Fairley, but he's got that kind of potential. That's the kind of player he can be. Now, I don't think you can say anybody's ever going to put up the stats Nick put up in that one season. But he can he can affect the pocket in that way. Um, and when you have interior pressure, it just makes everything that much easier for you as an overall defense. If you have somebody that can get that level of push and create negative plays, he's a huge piece. I think he's a top 70 player on both 24-7 and on three. Um, I don't know where Rivals has him ranked, but anytime you get a top 70 player in the country, that's a huge deal, specifically by these two recruiting services. So massive pickup for Auburn. Really like his game. Um, I'm going to be interested to see who the D.C. is to see how he fits in the defense. But typically speaking, a guy like him, he fits in most every defense. Hey, Keith, another guy that Auburn picked up a commitment from was Brenton Williams, the uh, three-star edge from Opelika. You were all over that recruitment. Walk us through this. This this guy kind of of came on late, and and Auburn jumped in there and snagged him up pretty quickly. Yeah, well, you know, now I'm inside, so now the music like a kiss is right here right now. But no, I think one of the things with you know, Brent Williams, I think I said, did you guys know about him the whole time or did you just kind of find out about him? I mean, he's an open like right down the road from Auburn. As it turns out, Auburn really did not know much about him, Jeffrey, you know, until maybe four or five weeks ago. Uh, but Drew Fabianis, who was then GM at the time for Auburn, watched his film, fell in love, passed along to Rock Bell and Tony, then the ex coach. Now, both of those guys aren't even there anymore. And, uh, Bell and Tony fell in love, and Auburn immediately began to push and tried to flip it to Coach Carolina. We don't know what the new staff, we don't know who the new edge coach is, we don't know what Priest thinks, but the, the guys at Auburn thought that, that Brent Williams had such an upside that the arrow was pointing so far up for him. He'd made such improvement from last year to this year, and being a local kid, they felt like this guy's going to bust his butt, that they thought like it was a no brainer to take him. Now we'll see. We'll see. I mean, for, for the kids' sake, I, I, I hope it works out because he. He is a guy that has made dramatic improvements. And it seems like he's made, like he flipped from Coastal Carolina, so people are probably thinking, well, wait a second, Auburn shouldn't be recruiting again Coastal Carolina. But just in recent weeks, Michigan State had offered, Penn State had offered, uh, maybe Missouri as well. So schools with good defensive line traditions had come after Brenton. And I know Jay had a big fan, but uh, I feel like he's locked in. He's locked in. I think he's probably just waiting to hear from Auburn, okay, you're, we're locked in with you too, that kind of thing. Again, the, the guys that are no longer there, the Bell and Tony, maybe I'm just well, thought that this guy was uh, thought that this guy was just a arrow pointing up, rising star kind of thing. Okay, Jay Head, you've, you've you've seen Brenton Williams play? I oh. have, and I tend to agree with that assessment of the staff. I think he is very, very similar to Kobe Wood. I mean, mm. similar upside, similar ability. I see a lot of the same flash and power. Um, he's not going to be your prototypical speed rusher off the edge by any means, but he's somebody that has the ability to hold the edge. Really is going to be good at stopping the run, and I think as he improves technique, you're going to see him as a very effective pass rusher as well. 
but a bigger body on the edge. I think he's at 245, 250 right now. My guess is he'll easily play at around 270 to 280. So probably your prototypical strong side end, five tech. That's what you're looking at. But a guy that, like Keith said, he's shown some kind of rapid development. And he's a kid, to the best of my understanding, when I've looked into him, he didn't camp a whole lot. This isn't a kid that went all over the place and, you know, and went to every Nikes or Under Armour, you know what I mean, camp. He's a guy that's just a local kid that put up a massive senior year. And sometimes those are the kind of kids, you know, look, you see them get drafted every year. They don't go to big schools or they didn't sign with big schools or they develop late and they end up being better players than some of these guys that were four and five stars very early in their career. So really like what they found there. If he's developed properly and contingent on the scheme, I think he can be a very effective player. Mm, all right. You know, sticking with – Keith talked about Rock Bell and Tony is no longer there. Jimmy Brumball is obviously – everybody's gone pretty much. And we're, we're seeing it have a trick, trickle effect on this class. Mm-hmm. So far, Adam Hopkins has decommitted the four-star wide receiver from Thomas TCC. Thomaston. Yeah. Thomaston. Tom, somewhere down there. I don't know if it's Thomaston, but it's some, Thomas, Thomas, County Thomas County TCC. That's what I said. Uh, he's decommitted. We think Jamarian Harkless is probably next. Kiwan Jenkins is another guy. We're all going to be keeping an eye on Keith. Talked to him the other night, and he said, I hope they keep me. And, you know, we said when he committed that it was kind of a risk because yeah. who knows what this next staff is going to do, and this next staff is here, and they haven't talked to him. Um, I think, Keith, you, you were on the Adam Hopkins decommitment, and I don't think he had heard from Auburn – and he actually initiated the conversation, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. That's right. Uh, Adam Hopkins' father, who, who messaged me, by the way, at 4.40 in the morning today to let me know that, well, he, he's a working guy. He works. I mean, you know, you, know, uh, you got to respect that. But he said he reached out. They were wondering what was going on, and they reached out to Auburn last night. But it's tricky right now. I mean, you know, Auburn had 13 commits, and when you looked at the commit list, we love all these guys. We get to know them and all that stuff. We like them personally, but uh, we knew this was there was a change. Some of these guys weren't going to be committed to Auburn much longer for a mutual parting of the ways, or maybe they just, you know, whatever. Saw Move the right on. All you know, didn't make, or maybe they're they're getting recruited by other schools like uh, Janoris Wilson, the offensive lineman, was a few weeks ago. But you mentioned Kewan Jenkins, the quarterback at Miami Central. As of last night, he hadn't heard. Now we're they're sorry, they're all in school today, and then practice, so we won't be able to get a hold of him until tonight. But as of last night, late last night, he hadn't heard from Hugh Freeze yet. You know, that's okay. None of the recruits had it. He's trying to put together staff. But he also hadn't heard from Cadillac Williams. He said he texted him a couple times. Uh, hadn't, hadn't heard back. And he understands. He says, I was freaking out at first. But people said, hey, they're really busy trying to put together a staff right now. Um, so he understood. But he, he wants to know his future. I mean, it was one of the greatest days of this guy's life when he was able to flip from FIU to Auburn, Auburn being his dream school. Uh, now he's in limbo. He doesn't know what's going to happen. And he's, he's a little concerned, quite frankly. And, you know, obviously he's got three teammates that are targets of Auburn. Uh, he's a quarterback, uh, but he's got three teammates that are that are targets: wide receiver Lamar Seymour, linebacker Steve Juan Clark, and edge Reuben Bain. And Bain's really the the prize of the whole group. And he mm-hmm. said Reuben was really shook, really shaken by the departure of Rock Bell and Tony Auburn's edge coach. I didn't like what I heard there. I, I wasn't. That made me a lot less optimistic about Auburn's chances, which were already. Not going to be easy. I mean, they had a good shot, but there's some real competition there, Miami and Alabama. He did say Stan Quan Clark, though, told him he was going to give Auburn a real shot. He's close with the linebackers coach, Christian Robinson, who for now is going to stay on the staff. We don't know. He's got an interview with the new D.C. We don't know what the future holds. But, uh, you know, you, you may have had a chance to get all four of those guys down there. And now we don't know if any of them are going to end up at Auburn. But that's, this is normal for these types sure. of these coaching changes. happen. But, but, Jeffrey, you brought it up uh, a, you know, a week or so ago. We were all curious as to why Alvin would take his commitment so close to the day when they knew a new coach was coming, mm-hmm. and who may change his mind and all that. Why not just wait? Why not just wait five or six or seven more days? That would have been my question. Um, but you know, Cadillac Williams was the interim coach. He took his commitment, and, and we don't know what's going to happen now. But he has FIU still wants him, so he could go back there. Uh, and he said Louisville's interested, and Louisville is working on all those same guys we just mentioned. But they do have a lot of success down in South Florida. Mm. One of the reasons is Wesley McGriff, former Auburn DB coach, is on that staff, and that's his area. That's He's always recruited well down there. Yeah. Wesley McGriff, former Auburn and Ole Miss DB yes. coach. 
Uh, yes. Matter of fact, was he a defensive coordinator? He was. He was. He did in between stints, so he went. So he was obviously at Ole Miss. Went to the NFL for three years. Oh yeah. And he was at Auburn. Then he was the defensive coordinator at Ole Miss, and then back to Auburn again. Was he was two two different stints at Auburn? That's right. Wow, man, it's, I've been around a long. Cole, welcome to the show, big dog. Jeffrey, I now understand what you mean by Auburn traffic. Oh, <laughs> Cole, man, isn't it man. bad? It's awful, dude. Awful. <laughs> God, I mean, I was five minutes away. It took me twenty minutes to get here. Whatever. We're here. Mm. Hey, you well, here, Cole. You went for for those listening. I think Keith said it earlier, but we're recording Thursday afternoon, and this is probably go live Friday morning. So keep that in mind when you're listening to us talking about yesterday or today or tomorrow. Um, it is Thursday, Cole. You just got back from from Jordan Hare Stadium. Uh, okay, it was the eleven o'clock game today was the three A matchup between St. James, where Jimmy Perry is the head coach, used to be on Tupperville staff. Yeah, yeah. Um, Versus Piedmont and St. James pulled away in the second half and won their first state title in a really long time. All right, Jimmy Perry, father of Danny Perry, former Auburn tight end. That's correct. Saw Danny today. Was with Danny today. Look at Keith, dude. Tell me you don't have pineapple on a pizza. I hope he does. Onions and pepperoni and extra sauce. You got to get extra sauce because that means they can't just give you something that's been sitting around for three hours. I hear you. I hear you. Cole, yeah. you like pineapple on your pizza? There's I no do. Pine- I'm a pineapple guy. Oh. Hmm. Jeffrey's about to. Huh. <laughs> I will reconsider my friendship with Mr. Cole Pinkston. <laughs> Although, no, nah, dude, you're good. You, if you don't like Auburn traffic, we good. I, I'll, I'll look over to pineapple. Hey, I sure don't. I sure don't like it. <laughs> Zach said that's a crime, Cole. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see, Cole. We were talking about the decommitments, uh, decommitment of Adam Hopkins, presumably of Jamari and Harkless. Keith was talking about Kiwan Jenkins and the effect Rock Bell and Tony will have his his dismissal will have on guys like Reuben Bain. And Keith said, you know, hey, Kiwan Jenkins said it ain't looking too good with Reuben. And I heard from two different other people that Auburn's chances took a big turn down. And that's I guess that's to be <coughs> excuse me, that's to be expected. Um you got Reuben Bain Cole brought up your alley. You talked to Russell's coach, you talked to James Smith's coach. James Smith is James Smith's coach yeah. Yeah. at Carver Montgomery. What did he tell you about the two five stars and their thoughts on this coaching hire? Well, the main thing I wanted to know, because because when I talked to Quay Russell, um, James had the flu when I went a couple weeks ago, and this was right after the firing of Brian Harson. We knew who the you know preliminary targets were at the time. I said Lane Kiffin, what do you think? They knew who he was. You know, yeah, I know who he is. Yeah, he's talked to us before. He's recruited us. Um, Matt Rule, they knew who he was just because he's in the NFL, but they didn't really know Hugh Freeze, and uh, you know that's. I guess that's a little bit of a concern, but I asked the coach, uh, Marcus Gardner is his name. You know, how big of a concern is that? Is that going to really hurt Auburn? And they're, he was like, I don't know, man. The, the success that Freeze has had in recruiting, I really don't count him out with what he was saying. Like, you really can't count him out right now. He said, and, and really the staff at Auburn, the, the ones that were there and some of the ones that are still there, like Zach Etheridge, mm. man, they really um, sold Auburn to these guys. I mean, they – they, they weren't really thinking too much about who's going to be there, who's not going to be there. It was more about Auburn. So, it's like, yeah, they're in the game. I mean, he said nothing's changed. Nothing's changed with that. So, when, when Freeze gets in contact and when some of these new guys come in and get in contact, he said, yeah, they're, they're in the game. For sure. I'll be curious to see if they come back. I would expect them to come back to Auburn to meet the new staff before early signing day. If they don't, obviously that's not going to look good for Auburn. I can't imagine them choosing Auburn on signing day having not come back to, for another visit. And I'm not saying it has to be an official visit during the weekend, but those guys are right down the road. They can come down any afternoon, um, any evening, and I'm sure Auburn will make it <clears throat> make the, uh, the the accommodations for them any time they want to to come down and meet the new staff and, and see everything. Um, you got to think as long as the NIL is thriving as it is with Aunt Victory, uh, the football-only facil- football facility, the program's trajectory, at least 
what people think is on the way up, mm-hmm. uh, they're going to be they're they're going to be in there with them. Cole, you brought up Zach Etheridge. I think he is he's still on. As we said earlier, he still has to interview with the defensive coordinator when he's hired. Right. But you know, I was doing the hot board today, the defense Thursday, um, and I'm going through these DBs and I'm going. These are all Zach's guys, you know. Tyler Scott, Colton Hood, Tony Mitchell, uh, the K-, K and Lee's coming in this weekend for an official visit. Those are all Zach's got. He's already got who committed? Oh, J C Hart. Yep. Um, and then and then you, you think about who? Terrence Love. Terrence Love. Yes, I was, I was about to say his his recruiting footprint in Montgomery, in Atlanta. Uh, he, he's very big for those guys, so he could be a big piece to this puzzle and we should know something on him and Christian Robinson and the defensive coordinator in, I would say pretty damn soon. I, we, we think before Monday, the entire staff should be in place. Wouldn't y'all think? Predominantly, I would think most of the staff will be in place. Yeah. I think we're, we feel pretty good about two members that, you know, coach freeze may or may not be bringing over with him. I think we've, we've announced Jeremy Garrett or we've broken that. There may be one other that we'll announce here relatively soon coordinators will probably fall into play after that, I would think. And then, like you said, yeah, Jeffrey, that you'll kind of have some staff interviews unless it's, you know what I mean, a, a guy that he's just hugely familiar with or in favor of. Coordinators are probably going to have some some say on who the next hire is going to be. But like you said, early next week, you should probably have, have all that wrapped up and these guys are getting on the road. Well, because Auburn's not – and it makes sense now. When, she, when, when he was first hired, I put out a war room real quick saying, hey, man, Listen, this is the calm before the storm. They're not having they're, – they're bringing in one guy this weekend. It's only because he couldn't make it work any other weekend. So, they're going to bring him in, Kay and Lee. Four-star defensive back from Cedar Grove, Ellenwood, I believe. Uh, yes. And he is committed to Ohio State. He's, he's been to Auburn at least once we know of for an uno, unofficial visit. He's coming back for an official visit this weekend. He'll be the only one. And it makes sense that they're not going to – because look at all the, the coaching turnover that's going on right now. It makes sense that hey, next Friday, when the we're going to expect a big group, then following Friday, there's two weeks left after this weekend. Those two weekends are going to be huge, official visit wise. All the coach presumably will be in place, majority of on Monday. Now you've got a week to kind of settle in before you bring these kids on campus and try to get them in this class because signing day is what three weeks from yesterday, December twenty first. So it's here, it's coming, and so. A lot is going to go on. We're going to see new targets. We're going to, and I wrote this today. New targets are going to emerge. Old targets are going to fade. Will Will Christian Robinson be retained? If so, will Stanquan Clark and uh, Brian Longwell will they remain at the top of the linebacker board? What's the system that we're going to we're going to see from this defense? Or yep. are we going to see the three four? Are we going to see the four uh, three? So a lot a lot of as Keith likes to say unknown variables here. But we think all this is going to be ironed out over the next. 72 hours. You got championship Saturday where you've got all the uh, conference championships. And so if there are coaches who are potential additions to the Auburn staff, you're probably not going to hear from them until after that, after that game. Is that fair to say, Jay Head? Very fair. Uh, and, and look, the word in the coaching community right now is, is that expect a lot of transition after championship weekend. With the, you know, obviously teams that are going to be in the playoff. You're not going to see any movement out of teams like that, not unless it's an absolute necessity, and I can't imagine that to be the case. Um, but, yes, a lot of crossover is going to happen immediately. I'm talking about the Monday. It's going to be Black Monday all over again, and you're going to see a lot of transitions start to take place. Well, let, let's talk a little about the coaches. We know everybody but Carnell, C-Rob, and Zach have been let go. Yes. Uh, we haven't seen any – off the field staff let go yet but we've seen some additions we've seen three guys from liberty come down in front office roles as i like to say we've seen the defensive line coach from liberty the tight end coach from liberty is coming as well or we i don't think we've reported it yet but all indications and then you know justin put up a uh, kind of a a staff hot board, or at least a table of uh, to track some potentials. Jay Head, you're more well versed in, in this than we are. Some names that we've heard, and I think 
It's tough to say. Look, we'll start at the top. Offensive coordinator, defensive coordinator. Do we know like some legitimate candidates? So I do believe um, that legitimate candidate wise, when you're trying to narrow this down, I think you're obviously going to look to who has connections to Hugh Freeze. The first name that should, from an offensive standpoint, because he's done a fantastic job at Liberty, should be his current OC. Mm -hmm. Cole, help me with the name here. Kent Austin. Yes, Kent 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 Austin. Austin. He is a former all-SEC quarterback himself at Ole Miss, has been an OC at Ole Miss, has been a head coach in the CFL and an offensive coordinator in the CFL, and most recently with Hugh at Liberty for the last four years, where they developed a third-round pick in Malik Willis. They also, this past season, went through four different quarterbacks and still were able to win eight football games. Probably should have won more. They tailed off down the stretch. But anytime you go through four quarterbacks in a season and you still have a winning season, I don't think people realize what a feat that truly is. And they were able to keep that offense largely productive all the way to the end. Beyond that, Kendall Bryles is a name that has been mentioned. Um, that is somebody that there, there's possible interest in. And then you also want to look at a previous OC, one that's at the University of North Carolina. He, he plucked when he was at Ole Miss out of, give me just a second, and I'll think of the name of the school, uh, Sam Houston State. And that OC is? Phil Longo? You got it. Phil yeah. Longo, who happens to be, I think, the most productive, or his offense is the most productive offense in the entire ACC this past year. So those are three really good choices for me at offensive coordinator, guys that Hugh Freeze all has ties to or has communicated with at some point. There may be a surprise name out there that we don't know, but those are guys I think as far as quarterback and OC that you could probably keep an eye on. Now, Longo's still at North Carolina, correct? That's correct. See, that one could, to me, that one could be difficult because he's got a QB that's going to probably finish in the top six or seven of the Heisman voting this year in Drake May, and I believe he's still got some eligibility left. So mm. it's sometimes it's hard to convince a guy. <laughs> you know, uh, I got a guy next year that might win this Heisman, and, and we're, we're going to win nine, ten games this year. So I wonder about Longo. That one's a little – that one, I don't know. We'll see. Well, one, let's say Kent, Kendall Bryles and uh, Kent Austin – and we'll even throw if you're if you get one of those three. I don't know about these guys. Tell me, Jay Head. If you get one of those three, is it a home run? I think it's a home run with all three. If I'm being completely honest, now, any of the three are a home is a home run to me. And now look, I what has Auburn needed more than anything, period, in a long time is somebody that can develop quarterbacks. Right now, obviously, your head coach has a good track record. Ken Alston has a very good track record. Obviously, Kendall Bryles has had some very successful passers at both Baylor um, and at Ar- well at Arkansas. Pretty much everywhere he's been, Houston, he's developed quarterbacks. And then Phil Longo has done a fantastic job um, at Ole Miss and as well as North Carolina. Now, I'm with Keith. I think Longo's a tough pull. But with the price break that you got on paying Hugh Freeze – at 6.5 versus the 9 million plus you would have had to have paid Lane Kiffin, you probably can afford to go up in salary for a coordinator. And he's only making $980,000 a year at North Carolina. How much can UNC pay him by comparison to an SEC school? I don't know how how they expect these guys to be able to feed their families only make it. It's tough, man. Um, It it is tough, Keith. You know, we can't all drive Broncos like you. (laughs) And eat pineapple pizza. Hold on. Lightly used. Lightly used. (laughs) I tell you, the uh, the defensive coordinator position has got some names on it. Now, Justin listed some guys, and we'd all chipped in and, and kind of contributed to what we had been hearing. Some guys we think are potential candidates for the defensive coordinator. It's really good. The list yes. is really good. Barry Odom, Chris Kiffin, Charles Kelly, Travis Williams, Traveris Robinson, and Joe Witt Jr. Whew. That's a pretty damn good list, Cole. I tell you what, um, I, I'm trying to call all my Alabama high school coaches. Of course, three uh, three or four of the ones that I wanted to talk to specifically about the Hugh Freeze hire are in championship games today and tomorrow and Friday. So I'm trying to wait for them to get done with that, and then I'll talk to them some more. But I did talk to the uh, coach from Hoover last night, um, Waldrop, 
and yeah. he was telling me about Barry Odom coming by his school, and, and he is. He said that Barry Odom might have been the best recruiter of, of his kids. No kidding. A couple years. He said he he has just been so genuine. He comes down and sits down in the office. It's like he's just another guy there, and you don't even realize who he is. He said he's just been a great recruiter as far as talking to his football players. So I thought that was a really interesting huh. thing I learned last night. And I'll, I'll write more about that too. But but uh, if you're looking at Odom and you're wondering, you know, uh, his, his Arkansas defense doesn't look all that great. Well, it seems like he's a pretty good recruiter, and you got to be in, in this day and age if you want to have success. I'll, I'll tell you one thing that will help the next defensive coordinator, better players, right? Doesn't and, it always so, seem to help? It, it's amazing. No, and I, and I say that sarcastically but also honestly because – to me, you've got to find a guy that can balance it, that's got a good track record. Uh, well, not not everybody's been a coordinator or has SEC coordinator experience. Chris Kiffin hasn't been an SEC coordinator, but what he has been is a guy, an ace recruiter as a defensive line coach at Ole Miss. So who, all those guys are guys that can recruit. All the guys you just mentioned have track records of being excellent recruiters. And Auburn's got to beef up the talent. I mean, maybe in year one it's plug and place, but by year two and year three, specifically year three, at that point, Auburn should have really developed some kind of identity yeah. on defense and, along with a major upgrade in talent by, by that point. And so who's who can do the balance? Who can balance it? Now, the misconception is that defensive coordinator isn't always uh, – I think people think, well, that guy's going to lead your recruiting. Not always. It's important. But they give coordinators smaller reads. They don't, they don't have the responsibility, recruiting responsibilities of like a linebacker coach or secondary coach. They keep those guys close to home base um, because they're coordinating the defense, obviously. So uh, it's going to be interesting. I mean, you start looking for tea leaves. I mean, you know, Garrett, who they hired as the defensive line coach, was Chris Kiffin's defensive line assistant with the Cleveland Browns. He also uh, played at Ole Miss when Hugh Freeze worked at Ole Miss, and, and Chris Kiffin worked for Hugh Freeze at Ole Miss later on. So you start looking for all these connections because what we've learned is people are always looking for splash hires, right? And most assistant coach hires end up being guys the coaches know, right? Jay Ed, they're in their Absolutely. circle. They're either in their circle or one of their friends' circles. Yes. And Grant heard the receivers coach at UCF, whose name was on that same list that Justin put out. Again, he's Gus Malzahn's receivers coach. Before that, he was Hugh Freeze's receivers coach at Ole Miss. So you start looking for all these connections. So far, the connection guys are the ones getting the jobs. I mean, uh, Christian Robinson was a GA for Hugh Freeze at Ole Miss. So, I mean, you know what I mean? So that's what we're looking for right now. Mm-hmm. It's not all about the splash and, and all that stuff. And let's go get this guy and go get that guy. There, it, there are elements of that. But by and large, you, you look from your pool of people that you know first. Yeah. Well, and, and, go I'm ahead, sorry. Jay. Let, let me throw one thing in there, Jay Head. Absolutely. You look at look, these guys, th- that like that Ben Agamaya, he'd been with Hugh Freeze since 2008. He's been with him through thick and thin – for, mm-hmm. for the better part of, I can't do my math, 15 years, going back to as a player, and now Hugh gets a job at Auburn, and you, you, you're not going to bring him with you? I mean, that, lo- I mean loyalty, yeah. it, it kind of goes back to the circle, right? Absolutely. Your, your tight circle, your loyalty. Uh, but go ahead, Jayhead, I'm sorry. Oh, can I say one quick, Jayhead? Yeah, absolutely. Go well, ahead, you know, Again, Florida's always going to be my point of reference, unfortunately. I know I hate people get tired of me bringing it up, but – when Spurrier got to Florida from Duke, people said, who are all these guys that he brought with him? We don't know any of these guys. They were guys he brought from Duke that understood his offense, that understood what he expected out of his defense, that understood how he wanted to run a program. And and so, yeah, obviously staffs are more are much bigger now, on-field, off-field, all that. But, mm-hmm. again, trust and comfort is so important to a guy like Hugh Freeze and, and any head coach because they don't want to be worried about a million other things. Is this guy going to be a divisive force? No, I've been with him for seven years. I know the guy. I can mm-hmm. trust him. So there's all kinds of elements that go far beyond just X's and O's and things like that. Well, and yes, and yes, and yes, Keith. Comfort and fit are huge as far as system carryover and everything else, culture building. But it's also what you're seeing is if you see two young guys getting hired, and you have to have a mix of young, old, in between schemers, recruiters, it is a very tricky and delicate balance. And if I have any one fault with the Brian Harson era, it felt like it got a little too lopsided on the scheme side 
and not enough with the recruiting side. There's a very delicate balance that you have to walk. And I think you're going to see two young guys. And I've already I've already been doing my, my due diligence with our new defensive line coach. Very active recruiter. Got ties in Atlanta already. He's popular in the Nashville area, which is a booming area for high school football as far as that's concerned. I'm sure his personality will resonate with, with kids in, in Alabama uh, and other places that we're going to recruit. So love to see a young guy get to cut his teeth. And he's a, he's a young guy that I think played in the SEC, has coached in the NFL. Now he's coached at a lower level. Really shown, I think, his team had more tackles for loss this year than Auburn. Is that correct, Cole? Am I right on that? You're talking about at Liberty? Yes. Led the country. Yeah. Led the country in tackles for loss. So shows you that he knows what he's doing, okay? And he was mentored by Chris Kiffin, who's obviously an NFL defensive line coach and knows what he's doing. This is his guy. So really impressed with him, the tight end coach. He's a young guy. He's loyal to Hugh. He knows the offense. You know you're going to get something out of him. Is I mean, I'm excited about it. And then the question is, what do we layer around them? Well, you're talking about on the offensive side, definitely a very two or all three guys are veteran offensive coordinators. Mm. Now, how do we work it out at the, at, at the DC side? I like Barry Odom. I think he's a great schemer. I think Arkansas had a ton of injuries this past year. For people that don't know that their secondary was completely banged up, I think they only played. They're starting four or five together. Well, I guess it's their starting six because they've run yeah, three, six, six. They lost Jalen Catalan early on in the season. That was their best player coming back. I mean, they had a lot. Yeah, he's, of- yeah he was an absolute game changer. And you can talk about more than, about that more than I can, Cole. But they only had the same starting rotation, I think, one or two games. And, and yeah. then everything else was just like mix and match pretty much the entire year. And I'm not trying to make excuses for Barry Odom, but not having a healthy team is a real thing. Well, then you look right. at Chris Kippen. Been a defensive coordinator at FAU for his brother Lane. Has been in the NFL where he's probably really become a scheme head the last four or five years. You know, college football is great, but you have to balance recruiting, right? Oh, yeah. In the NFL, that's your master's course in football. All you do is sit around, draw up, coach. So Mm -hmm. when you come back down a level, you're prepared to be a coordinator at that point. So there are guys I know that they're – Oh, he's never been a you know a P five coordinator, but look, he's he's getting that experience in the NFL. I don't think people people need to understand that that's transferable knowledge as far as that's concerned at a much higher level. So don't be thrown off by that. JWJ Joe Witt Jr. I love him. I think mm-hmm. he's ready to be a defensive coordinator, if not a head coach. I think a lot of Joe. I think he would be fantastic. T Rob has been a phenomenal coordinator. I mean, head, not coordinator. Excuse me, phenomenal recruiter and good defensive backs coach. I know his track record with Will at South Carolina was not great, but remember it's South Carolina, and Auburn's going to be able to accrue a little bit different talent base than South Carolina, so maybe it would be worth it. And then in Charles Kelly, who's the yeah. name that's kicking around. I'll tell you what, talking about all these you know pretty solid names on the defensive side, and a lot of people look at Hugh Freeze as an offensive coach, and you know he kind of is. That that might actually the fact that he calls plays might actually, you know hurt him a little bit when he's looking for an offensive coordinator oh definitely they they don't want to you know if if he is going to call plays and he's undecided on that according to you know what he said in the press conference but you know if if things get rough you know the guys like that are going to go back to play calling that's just how it goes so yeah that's certainly how it went that's certainly how it went with gus (laughs) i mean he was probably you know probably brian harson too i mean we, we don't know for sure but I mean, it looked a lot like his stuff there at the end in the second season for sure. But, I mean, as an offensive coordinator, you, you know, you're kind of hesitant to go into a situation like that. You can get a younger guy like mm-hmm. Gus like Kenny Dillingham. Of course, that turned out pretty good for him. Um, but on the defensive side, I mean, you look at his defenses, Ole Miss, Liberty, they're always good, man. Yes. They're always mm-hmm. good defenses. They got underrated players, sometimes undersized, but just really good football players on defense. So – some good names on the defensive side. Some, you know, maybe position coaches and coordinator are going to be attracted to his style. You know, I did a story a couple of days ago just on, you know, five or six of, of three star gems yeah. at Ole Miss. And uh, and there are a couple of guys I didn't even mention, but uh, they, I mean, one of them was Evan Ingram, though, tight end from Atlanta. Oh, yeah. Now, I knew a lot about him just because his seven on uh, seven coach. Happened to be the father of a four-star quarterback at the time, Eddie Prince. 
And he said, Keith, this guy is unbelievable. I'm telling you. Well, his son got all the accolades and, and, and never really made his mark at the college level. And meanwhile, the tight end that nobody really wanted camped at Ole Miss. They liked him. I, I actually introduced them to their quarterback signing at the time. They become great friends. Uh, and, um, and, and, and so he's got a track record of, of finding these three-star guys. Mike Hilton, okay? And on both sides of the ball, by the way. Mike mm-hmm. Hilton, 5'9", undersized running back slash DB from Sandy Creek, which at that same time, Jeffrey and, and Jay had go. You'll remember Sandy Creek had mm-hmm. uh, big-time receivers that were Damari Kitt and the other guy, the Jaquay yeah. guy. That was a big, All these big recruits. And Mike Hilton wasn't even a big name. He goes to Ole Miss. They put him at DB. He's starting halfway through his true freshman season. Now he's a he's in his sixth year in the NFL as a starter, and they've got a Ole Miss. We know about all the big name recruits at Ole Miss. We know that he was able to get the big name guys, but him and his staff also did a great job of identifying. Can y'all still hear me? Oh yeah. Oh, they, they did a great job of identifying because look at Ole Miss. You can't. They're not going to out recruit Bama from top to bottom, right? So they had to really go dig deep on their evaluations, and there were a lot of three star finds for them. The the receiver from Auburn. Alabama, Jeffrey, that, that, that ended up over there. I mean, uh, yeah. So I think that, uh, um, you know, when you look at these guys, I know I'm getting all, this is different than what we were talking about, but I just started thinking about this. You freeze that he's proven that he can go out and get you the five stars. He's proven he can go out and get you the four stars, but he's also proven he can find you some really valuable three stars too. So, uh, it's going to take that kind of complete balance. And then obviously now the addition <laughs> is the portal. And you've got to be able to identify talent there, too. You know, not, not every guy that enters the portal is somebody you want to take. I mean, this guy's an offensive tackle. Okay, but can he come in and start? I mean, that's right. what, Auburn needs bona fide starters right now. So I'm, I'm interested to see how this all shakes out in the coming days and weeks with them uh, targeting all these guys. And that's something we need to come back to, Keith. The, the transfer portal opens officially December the 5th, Monday. Yeah. And we saw an offensive tackle from Rhode Island get offered uh, on Thursday. Zach, I'm going to have some more information on that. Let me just run down real quick and finish off Justin's list on the coaches because uh, uh, Jeremy Garrett has been hired. Uh, mm-hmm. Linebackers Christian Robinson we know. Travis Williams, if he's the D.C. I don't, cannot see Travis Williams, who's been a linebackers coach at Auburn, who's now a defensive coordinator at UCF, going back to Auburn as a linebackers coach. I personally don't see it. That's just my personal opinion. Um, I think Christian Robinson's the man to beat right now, uh, unless Tra- uh, Travis gets it. DB coach Zach Etheridge, we talked about him. Wesley McGriff, Keith mentioned him. Traveris Robinson, we've talked about him at the defensive coordinator. It's kind of like, you know, it depends on who gets the defensive coordinator position. Maybe we'll, we'll tr- probably trickle down to where these guys end up. And that might be why Christian Robinson and Zach Etheridge made that first cut, but they're not guaranteed a second cut because if that defensive coordinator coaches their position, they're probably gone. Correct. So it might be now, tough I, to I, keep I would, both of those guys. I would say this, and sorry, it's getting dark in my car here, but uh, I would say this. If you really wanted Travis Williams to be your DC, Christian Robinson may be able to coach the edges and outside backers. Okay. Because at Ole Miss, you know, he was a GA under Hugh Freeze at Ole Miss. You know what position? Defensive line. Uh, he won. was a linebacker. Uh, you're right. I looked, yep. Yeah. He's done D line. He was Chris, again. You talk about another connection. He was Chris Kiffin's D line graduate assistant at Ole Miss. So you just never know. Is it a situation where you go? Hey, I just want the five best guys. A lot of these guys, like Zach Etheridge, could coach safeties or corners, right? Yeah. Wesley McGriff could coach safeties. Some guys could coach. Yeah. If you could coach running back, a lot of those guys. Larry Porter coached running backs, then tight ends, then. You, right. know, I, you know, a lot of those guys can coach multiple things. Just, just food for thought. If, if they in fact really wanted T. Will. Very, very true. I think wide receiver Grant Hurd is the man to beat from from everything we've heard. No pun intended. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we talked about him earlier. He's Gus now. He was with Hugh at Ole Miss. And uh, interesting uh, talk. He, he he was in Indiana and actually recruited some of these guys like Camden Brown uh, when that, when he was coming out of high school. Uh, quarterbacks coach is kind of like. Who's going to get the offensive coordinator? Because you're also going to double as the quarterback's coach. So, Ken Austin, Phil Longo, uh, who else did we say? Uh, Kendall Bryles. Yeah, that was, those were our three uh, OCs. I tell you what, the biggest hire may be offensive line coach. And I know Matt Luke 
is really, really close with Hugh Freeze. And if he was to come out of retirement, it would prob- probably be for Hugh Freeze. I'm told that Auburn will make Matt Luke tell them no at least twice. Like, they're going all in on this guy. They want Matt Luke. And uh, Marcus Johnson, Jay Head, what, 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 I don't know about him. So Marcus He's on Johnson, the list as well. He's a former player at Ole Miss. Uh, cut his teeth underneath David Cutcliffe. He's been an offensive line coach at Duke, Mississippi State, and now Missouri. And if you remember when we hired Jack Bicknell, Marcus Johnson was the number one choice on Gus's board and spurned us to go coach at Missouri. So some familiarity there. And Hugh has familiarity with Marcus Johnson from his time in Mississippi. Um, I think he would be a really great offensive line coach, solid recruiter from what I understand. Anybody that cuts their teeth underneath David Cutcliffe understands offensive football at a high level. Cut is a fantastic coach. So would be excited about him if that's your number two option. Uh, to Matt Luke, obviously Luke's a home run. Marcus Johnson's a solid triple. So let's see here. Uh, running back coach, we know Cornell is going to be that, as, as long, along with associate head coach Ben Agamaya. We talked about him being the tight ends coach. He's also brought – Hugh Freeze has also brought in some uh, off-the-field staff. Uh, Bruce Johnson, uh, yes. Dominic Studzinski is the strength and conditioning guy. Matt Bevins from Liberty brought him in as chief of staff. A.K. Magula. Uh, player personnel department, and then Kennedy Harvey, recruiting analy- analytics and operations. We were going to talk about the transfer portal opening up. Offensive tackle, offensive line is going to be huge for Auburn in this portal. We saw Auburn making a move today by offering uh, Keith, what was his name, from Rhode Island. I'm literally sitting in my car, man. I have no idea. You have to stop. <laughs> I, can't remember, I can't remember his name. Are you, did you see his name? It wasn't John Smith, okay? Hold on. Hey, hey well, here's yeah. – I wanted to read Zach. Zach, come on. Jump in here, big dog. You know about yeah. him. Yeah, help out, Zach. Are you key, big dog? <laughs> no. Um, it, it, it's If I'm not mistaken, it's a Johnny Cornelius is how you pronounce it. That's exactly – that's precisely the way you pronounce it. Yeah, for, <laughs> Yeah, from Rhode Island, and not a John, not Agony. No, <laughs> but no, I mean, well, he's got he's got three years to play two seasons. I know that. And right. Zach had a bunch of stats on him. I'm sorry, Zach. Go ahead. Yeah, no, um, man, he he's been elite for Rhode Island this year, and I know people look at the FCS level as like a lower level of competition in the SEC, which it is at, at the end of the day. But he played in one of the deepest conferences in the FCS and the CAA. They had yep. five teams make the playoffs this year, and Rhode Island was actually the first team left out from the conference. They had an explosive rushing attack, and he was actually the high, one of the highest-graded run-blocking offensive linemen in the entire country this year. And, and I think that that school is the same school. And Zach, you correct me if I'm wrong, that about five, four or five years ago when Herb Hand was still at Auburn, uh, produced the graduate transfer Tyler Catalina, who was an offensive mm. tackle, right? Yeah. Is that the or, same or was that, or was that UMass? No, that was UMass, yeah. Jack Driscoll was the one with UMass. Okay, okay. Yeah. okay. So yeah. same school, same school, right, Zach? Yeah, I believe so. And um, okay. and, and, and with this guy, I mean, he like I texted you guys. I know you posted on the board. I mean, he played over 700 snaps, only allowed one sack, six total QB pressures, and his total offensive PFF grade was almost a 90, which was the second highest in the entire country, only behind a potential first-round pick yeah. out of North Dakota State. Huh. And by the way, we should point out he's got already everybody after him. Okay, so yeah, right. You know, when, when talented people enter the portal, it's you know we have fans on the message board that say go get them. Okay, well that's obviously what you're trying to do, but now you're going to have to beat out, you know, a dozen other major Power Five programs because this guy's legit. Now, if you get him, he's got three to play two. You're probably not going to sit him out. You're going to need him right away, right, Jay Head Cole? Oh, absolutely. And Jeff. You need him right away. But if you can, if you can get two years out of the guy, now he could be maybe be a one and done guy. But if you can get two, and even if he's only one, then that could be the bridge between now and the younger guys you're trying to develop. Ideally, you'd love to be able to get two from him. But if he's as good as people say, that may be a little bit to ask. But uh, you know, one good year out of him gives you time to develop people. And if that doesn't work out, you you, you grab another guy the next year. But uh, you know, this is what you're looking for in the portal. You're not looking for guys. You know, there's always these second, third string guys at major programs that enter the portal and people are like, okay, let's go get him. He's got four years left. Well, as Jay head has pointed out, you right at this current stage, you're locked in with the transfer for the yep. remainder of his time. So you, if he gets in trouble, flunks out or stinks, you're stuck with that number against your 85 total. So you're looking for legit guys that can play and not just play. 
but this is a potentially a guy that could help elevate your offensive line to the next level. You got one really good lineman coming back, we think, Jeremiah Wright. Uh, yeah. After that, though, it seems like four spots are probably going to be wide open. Even even the ones where you have returning starters, you're going to they, they need to bring in a lot of guys and, and get some open competitions back. And but again, this is what you're trying to do: elevate the offensive line. They have to. They have no other choice. Well, and I think, I think Wright, yeah, with the, with the news of our most recent portal entry, I think Jeremiah Wright is the only returning starter on the offensive line. Yeah. Period. Yeah. So, oh, Keandre Jones. Yes. Unless you know Cam Stutz, I think has the availability to come back. You're but, right. But again, with the guards, I mean, they were in such a rotation. How do you even know who was a starter or not? <laughs> I, Cole, I don't know, man. But you're we, right. I, I forget that Stutz has another year. We think that. Well, I'm. I, I don't know for a fact, but that's going to be the first of many transfer offers. Um, we know we're tracking two guys behind the scenes that haven't officially entered or haven't hasn't. Um, or they haven't declare their intentions to enter the portal. We'll yep. wait on that, but there's one from a school up north. Uh, there's one from a school down south. Both were very highly coveted out of high school, signed with premier programs in college football, and have uh, have let made it known that they're looking to for a new home. And um, we'll, we'll hope to have – I hope next week we'll have those names out to you, but – Certainly, Auburn's doing their due, due, due diligence on all these guys because that Rhode Island, I, I, I never heard of the guy. I didn't, shouldn't, probably shouldn't have. Um, that, that's your starting right tackle next year if you land him. Right. Up. It, look, I, I, I watched some of his highlights today. I snuck away from my government job and ran to the bathroom real quick and pretended, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> threw, threw on the YouTube highlights. Now, legitimately, this kid is going to be your starting right tackle in the SEC next year. Um, maybe Keith's right. Maybe you can get two years out of him. Maybe he's just a year. But elite run blocker, um, I think he needs some work in his pass set to a degree. But if you bring in a guy like Matt Luke, well, now you're playing high-level competition and getting high-level coaching, and you're elevating your draft stock. So that would be my sell point if I'm Auburn right now, that's for sure. But the kid can play. That's There's no debating that. Yep. Going to be a lot going on over this next week with recruits, with transfer portal I'm going to see how this coaching staff shakes out. If I'm forgetting anything, fellas, throw it out there. I think we've hit on some of the high points. No, uh, I think we pretty much covered it. We talked about our two new commitments. We talked about our decommitment, coaching turnover. I guess the big thing is, guys, is just hang with us. That you know, I mean, it's it's constantly changing right now. It is. Know, as, as far as coaching additions, coaching subtractions recruiting is just it's mass chaos and it's going to be well the portal opens up on december the 4th that is the biggest note monday right monday and look it is going to i I promise you and cole i know you've heard this jeffrey fifth december the 5th it is going to literally be mass chaos everybody and their mom is going to be leveraging the new nil deal oh my god and dipping their toe in the portal everybody it's ridiculous Really, it is. <laughs> the NIL will rule the transfer portal. Am I wrong? No, no. yeah, you are not wrong. It is, and that's good of- for Auburn, right? Yes, because we well, let, say- me, uh, let me add one thing here before we close it out. I just want to, uh, you know, for me and Jay Head, when we, we break down and analyze all these guys, we're going to be wrong sometimes. Mm-hmm. We're going to be right sometimes. Uh, I felt like DJ James was the best transfer coming in. I think he's pretty much proven that, absolutely. But I've been wrong about a lot of guys. But I do want to put my name on these two guys that Auburn just got, Darren Reed and Brenton Williams. I really think those are good players, guys. Really? really I think Darren Reed, I mean, I went and watched him, um, you know, when they played Crisp County, which was a big game for Carver Columbus. He didn't play the first half because his, his shoulder was injured. But they were down at halftime, and, and he told me going in the locker room because I called him, and he was like, yeah, I'm going to play in the second half. I was like, All right, let's 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 see it. He comes in. Game changer. Chris really? County didn't the ball anymore. There was a big passing down. Darren Reed got in, stripped the ball, scoop and score. Okay? That's that's the kind of guy this is. And I really think he's a good player. And then Brenton Williams, I just think he's he's the right kind of guy. He's that raw talent guy. And, and, and it's just kind of, kind of that raw talent and that build and that frame that I just haven't really seen Auburn get in a couple of years. A couple okay. Of Kobe good. wouldn't light is how I would put it. Yeah, I just I want to 
put it out there that I think these guys are pretty good. You, you're yeah. putting your stamp on their approval, your stamp of approval on both of these commitments. Right, right. And I'm not going to do that for everybody. I it's hear you. Fabulous. But I think uh, those are good pickups. Zach, in this class, I wouldn't do that for. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, Zach jumped in here and said over 600 FCS players, over 600 FCS players have already announced they will enter the transfer portal. He's expecting similar numbers from FBS teams. It's going to be mad. Yes. Going to be mad. I will say this, guys. Uh, we're going to – I'm going to have a transfer portal hot board all by itself next week. We're going to we're gonna single those out. We're going to have the high school JUCO hot boards, but I'm going to have a separate – transfer portal hot board to help everybody including myself track who is in the portal that auburn has shown interest who is who who have uh, visited i mean who has auburn offered damn i can't get my verbs right tonight who <laughs> auburn has offered and then if any visits are coming in we will be we'll be tracking the transfer portal just as hard if not harder than some of these high school kids because it's going to be probably more important for hugh freeze jay hit best guess from each of you guys all right, we know that the class numbers projected are somewhere between 30 and 40, right? That's that's kind of what we've heard. How many from the portal do you think there are going to be versus how many from high school and junior college? Oh, Let's man. start with Jeffrey and then Key and then and Cole. I mean, and I'm in the pitch I'm in the pitch dark now. My pizza's getting cold and Jay Head's asking more questions. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm going to say uh, I'll give second. you a percentage. I'll give you a percentage. I think yeah. I think one out of every 3 will be transfer portal. Okay. Yeah, so thirty three percent. I'm gonna say about fifteen. Yeah, about fifteen. About fifteen of the guys will be portal guys. Okay. So fifteen out of forty five. That's about a third. Yeah. Or fifteen. Yep. You think it's gonna be more than that, Cole? I, I just I'm I'm thinking. Of, I don't mean this. In a, I'm thinking about last year, and we were saying twenty, twenty five, and they, they got ten or whatever. They're six. <laughs> I, I, well, hold on. They they wanted twenty or twenty five. They couldn't yeah, get. Yeah. I mean, they probably want thirty. You know. I just yeah. don't. It's hard to. I mean, I mean, I'll say, I'll say twenty. I, I'm not going to go above twenty. I'll say twenty. I'm going to go fifteen because I think the new rule is going to hamper some of what they wanted to accomplish. I think the fear of getting stuck with a kid that can't play, and then there's nothing that you can do about it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Until he exhausts eligibility, is going to temper some of the expectations. Now, if he's a high-level kid, he's a high-level kid, you're going to take him. You're not going to think twice about it. But how many high-level kids can Auburn get right now in the state that we're in? Selling playing time, a lot. But, you know, you're going to fill up on that quick. So I'm going to go with 15 from the portal, another 20, I think, of high school and junior college. So closer to 50-50. Yeah, closer to 50-50, slightly leaning towards junior college and high school. Um, but I just I think forty is such a large number to get in this class. Like I know that that, that got thrown out there. I just yeah. don't know how you're going to do that. I thought that from the from the beginning. I, you know, that's half the roster. Yeah, that, that's, that's half. Efficient. That's bad. If if uh, if, right. if you're replacing half the roster, we're thinking we're thinking no way they get to eighty five. Right? It's going to be a no. I, I, I don't think. They, yeah, I think Dang. they're going to be playing with some. I think if they're smart, what they'll do is is they'll budget their NIL money some, and they'll save it for some walk-on guys and some of these two stars and three the low three stars that have a lot of talent that are going to like Troy's or Middle Tennessee's or whatever. You'll try to pluck them. You know what I mean? Yeah. You'll try to give them a little NIL incentive. I think is what they'll do to kind of offset the roster some, so it's not to penalize yourself with a scholarship, but still be able to kind of bring in some talent to help compensate you on that eighty-five. Sure. Hey, uh, before we go, guys, I, it's been chaotic on the boards and everything, but I've managed to get a couple of how about you's in. I uh, wanted to get those out there. Um, I, does anybody have any, any, any how about you's this week? Uh, I'm going to give one to Charlie Five. Okay. Not have... for posting in particular, but uh, Charlie swapped some information with me lately. So okay. very, very well appreciated. So All right. Shout- Back to Charlie Five. I, he, he I'm going to go with uh, – oh, sorry. No, I was just going to say Charlie has his has his advantages. Yeah. I'm going to go with Thingsayer. Yeah. That guy, did the fa- that guy did the fastest 180 I've ever seen on an outgoing head coach, okay? <laughs> uh, right up until I think it was the Penn State game, he had uh, he had supported him like he was – like Brian Harson, like he was Vince Lombardi, okay? <laughs> and then by the second half of the Penn State game – that was it. He'd seen enough. But no, I, I'm I kid. I kid. He's a gr- he's a great poster. 
I disagree with probably half the things he says, but that's cool, man. That's that's what we. I mean, life would be so boring without guys like him. So keep it up, things, Sarah. Appreciate you, man. You know, he he did say today uh, that one of the things that he held true. He gave us a big uh, props to us. Yes, he, he, he gave did. us a how about you today. He did. He did. He certainly did. So he how about did. you, the things sayer? I'm going to give him a, yeah, a, a yeah. things sayer. How about you squared? Yeah. Yeah, he also ran the uh, Who Killed JFK thread to perfection. I mean, I, I went home that day thinking that the janitor at the White House was involved. So, yes, he's uh, – he's, no, I, I get I kid out of affection. He's done it. He's a hell of a poster, seriously. It was actually Scott from Virginia. No. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, I got uh, – how about you, the at BBP, at Rob's Chubb. I don't know what that means. Jeffrey as well. Okay, my bad. Go ahead then, Cole. Jump in here. No, uh, Hicks Rich, which I'm sure you're going to have – him on there how'd um, you know because he's hilarious man Isn't he's, he? he's killing me and uh moon wiggle oh absolutely oh hey i like it i, I showed my shirt last week it's in the dryer because i wear it thank you moon wiggle i appreciate it true south baby how you doing um at bbp at rob's chub at b die b d y e at j taylor 334 at hicks rich yeah. So we got Hicks Rich squared. We got Thingsayer squared. Moon Wiggle Charlie Five BBP Robs Chubb B Die and Ta J Taylor Three Three Four Man. Awesome, awesome posters. Our community is growing fast, man, and we appreciate cool. everybody. It's fan. I, I'm posting stuff and looking back five minutes later, and it's at the bottom of the front page, man. It, it's going great. We really appreciate everybody. If you're not a subscriber to Auburn Live on Three, please go give us a chance. It's twenty five dollars right now, not a penny more until September. Uh, so it's a great deal, and uh, nine dollars after that each month. We're going to have a lot, lot more coverage on the coaching turnover. We're going to have a lot, lot more coverage on recruiting and uh, where, where this uh, class is headed December 21st of the early signing period. Uh, we're going to be all over that. The transfer portal, as we've mentioned several times, kicks off officially December the 5th. We'll be all over that. Appreciate everybody. Hey, and listen, we don't, we don't, we don't expect any uh, tips or whatever fat chats or whatever they call from YouTube. All we do, if if, if you want to support us, man, on YouTube, please go subscribe to our channel, Auburn Live on Three YouTube channel. We would really, really appreciate that. Uh, and uh, like us and set those notifications so you'll get all the free content all week long that we upload just about every single day. All right, fellas, great show. We appreciate everybody. We will be back Sunday night for the Auburn Live call-in show. We will be looking forward to that. Hopefully, we have a lot more news to talk about on the show. 6.30 p.m. Central Time, Auburn Live call-in show. We'll be looking forward to that. Thanks, everybody, again. We really appreciate you all, man. Yeah, for Jay head for, for Cole, for Keith, for Zach in the back who came to the front but went back to the back. I'm Jeffrey Lee, man. Y'all stay out of the left lane. See ya.